Hark, what's the cry? Prepare to meet thy God today. You know, as much as I love the shape of this old clock, I really don't think that I need a timepiece that tells me that I'm going to die. But it's pretty. <laughs> And apparently I Googled it and this is a common sentiment that they used on clocks back in the day. I'm Michelle, this is my romantic tangle and let's go thrifting. This is the Safe Haven Thrift Store. It is, I guess you would call it the sister store to another one that I frequently visit. And they tend to have some really neat vintage stuff. This particular store is hit or miss. Most trips I leave empty handed, but I keep coming back because this is the place that I found all of the charm packs and jelly rolls. I've found great cross stitch patterns. None of the fabric in this bin was anything that you would use for quilting or needlework. Just a bunch of old upholstery fabric. And this print was pretty with the houses on it but it definitely was not worth two dollars. They always have a lot of stuff on the porch and that is where either you will find nothing or you will find something super great for dirt cheap. Today there was pretty much nothing. I do hope that someone who collects and appreciates cherished teddies finds these because I didn't take the time to look in the boxes, but I imagine that there was a whole slew of them in there. And that one building makes me wonder if it wasn't a nativity. Kind of want an old film projector. I know I'm going to wind up with one one of these days, but definitely not as is for $40 because I don't know how they work. I know we've got some old films we picked up at an estate sale. I like that they put the red and green urine in with the seasonal stuff. And look at this little dollhouse thing. I had to circle around to the back and it's just a front made to hang on a wall. But couldn't you do something for Halloween or Christmas? I really should have bought that in hindsight. The ladies who run the store obviously know about Pinterest because around the store they will scatter ideas for what you can do with frames or old chairs or in that case vintage plates. And I, I like it, but at times I think it drives up the prices. Please tell me if you understand this headboard. It was pretty, or if you touched up all those scratches or maybe repainted it, it could be gorgeous, but it is so low to the ground. It looks like it's size for a twin bed, but the whole headboard is maybe knee high. A few months ago, one of you kindly explained to me what these are for you plug them in and keep plates or serving plates warm on them. There's a whole collection of them. So I wonder if someone did a lot of potlucks or there has to be a story or maybe I'm just reading too much into it and they were all do donated by separate people. Curious to see what that was, but of course it was the blue and white pattern that is everywhere. And I think I told you a while back, I broke the bowl for my mixer and I've been looking for a set. That is exactly what I need, but I'm not willing to pay $10 for the set of three. I talked to my mom later and she said she's got one in her cupboard that belonged to a mixer she no longer owns. So she's probably going to let me have hers. I didn't know that knockoff precious moments were a thing. That is obviously meant to be precious moments cute little jewelry box that I like that it's tiny and practical because I have like no jewelry but probably have should have something to put my couple of pieces in. I like this little bucket shaving kit thing. I can't imagine that it's worth $45 especially when I'm sure all the polish and everything in it is dried up and no longer useful love the lamp. I am, I'm on a lamp kick lately. And I don't understand why you would put silk flowers in the base of an oil lamp. 
but I suppose they could be taken out and it doesn't hurt anything. The craft section, like I said, is really hit or miss. Either they have a lot of something great and they're trying hard to get rid of it, or like today, they have nothing. Kind of for 50 cents, wish I would have got these crochet a pillow doll head just so that I could someday have the option when I learned to crochet of making one because that's totally what my grandma would have, great grandma would have done back in the day. Didn't crawl down on the floor to sort through all the bins because they did not look promising. So when I was a kid, we had Mayor McCheese along with all of his other McDonald's land friends. I know we had Petunia Pig and all of the Looney Tunes characters until the dishwasher stripped all the colors out of them. We did not have Batman. I've never seen him before. When I was a little girl, I would have loved this mermaid doll. And I'm not really into thrifting Christmas presents for other people's kids. That one I think you could get away with, maybe. This is where I got thoroughly, thoroughly confused because they have got now a whole room of this stuff and I don't know why it's here. It so doesn't fit with anything the store has ever had before. And we had spent the previous night trying very hard watching YouTube videos and fixing our toilet flapper thing. That was exactly what I needed except they say universal and we've learned from sad expensive experience that they are not universal. And my husband had fixed ours by then anyway, so the whole thing was a moot point. I also want to know who goes to the thrift store and needs a six pack of bright yellow striping paint. It seems like these could have been better donated to Habitat to Humanity or maybe someplace else. Now we're at Teen Challenge where they have just huge tables of random Christmas stuff. But I did find a Dimensions Cross Stitch Kit. And it was unopened and it was pretty and I think it was cheap, but I have enough other stockings. I have more stockings I want to stitch than I have people in my family. And they're all kitchen and sewing room themed. So can I just stitch like a dozen stockings and hang them on my fireplace and not have any of them belong to any specific family member? I am pretty sure I can do that. I bought armloads of craft books here back when they had their four for a dollar sale. I think it was in the spring or summer and I go back and I look but it really doesn't seem like they're getting in anything new and the books they have right now are just the same needlework books that every single thrift store has five copies of. I'm curious why those books wind up on the shelf and why they stay there for so long and why they think they're going to get the prices they have on them. This store actually has cheaply priced books. And today was a shock because I glanced through this dollhouse book and didn't think I needed it. But then I saw something that could change that changed my mind. And then I found out that it was 10 cents. So it's a book. It's got six different patterns for international dollhouses. There's a gypsy caravan. There's a Japanese house. There's a Spanish hacienda. I am just dying to play with this. This little fluted dish was so cute and it was 19 cents. The identical one right next to it was 99 cents. So I'm a little confused by the pricing and a little confused that there must have been at least 15 of them. So I would guess that those were someone's wedding decorations or something like that. The past couple years in thrift stores, I see more and more wedding decorations and I don't, I'd love to know if somebody buys them and reuses them because at the prices they're asking, I don't think it's very practical. My daughter actually resold her own on Craigslist and I think she made a profit. I like this scrapbook. I have a similar style one at home and I've been using it to tuck cross stitch pieces between the pages so I don't lose them while I don't wind up deciding how I'm going to finish them. I know it is not acid free, but I don't think they'll be there for long enough for that to be a problem. At 99 cents, I probably 
should have thought a little more about picking that one up because that would be fun for junk journaling or something. And obviously my brain was not thinking in the right direction at that moment. And of course the rusty garden rake is in with the scrapbooking stuff. Did you see the tubes? I saw the tubes and I hustled around the corner because I knew there would be something good on the other side of those tubes. And I was not disappointed. Just look at this. I love old radios. I adore old radios. I have not seen one like this one. From the front, it looks like the top should lift up and there should be a phonograph in there, but the tubes at the back go all the way to the top. And I wasn't going to move things and try to figure it out because I am not allowed to buy any more old radios. I have one that I need to clean up and find a good home for in my house. So no more until I do that. I love this style of furniture. I don't know why, and right now the name of it escapes me, but I could fill my whole house with it. I was trying to work my way back to the shelf that on my last visit had that red hobnail base, but there were other people in the store, and there's nothing in the thrift store I need enough to get too close to other people, both for their sake and for mine. So it took a little maneuvering down other aisles and all that was left on the shelf where the vase was is lampshades. I knew it wasn't going to be there. And I'm not heartbroken that it wasn't there. Obviously, there will be another one because I've seen so many. Either that or I will never, ever see another one again. One or the other. And I am genuinely fine either way. This Getting past all this stuff did get me to the craft section and look at the zippers. That whole huge bag was only $5, which is really a good deal if you don't mind working with old zippers with metal teeth. And at the price of new zippers nowadays, I will absolutely work around the metal teeth for my own project bags that I'm using. It works and it's practical and I think I think I have enough zippers that I did not need to add that bag to my collection, but now that I look at it in some of the other colors, I am reconsidering that. And now we are at Goodwill and we are looking at what they had on the tag as a hanging body. I'm thinking probably they didn't know what this is. It's a fabulous fit pro master. They had it for, what does that say, $79? Yep, $79.99, and they're calling it a hanging body. That's actually a professional dress for them, and I Googled it, and they sell new for $500. Bucks, so I really, really hope that someone who needs one of those and knows what it is is the one who found it, because I would imagine that that thing is just going to absolutely make someone's day. I found it entertaining. I love this. And it's not because I want a mason jar with a snowman on it, but I want to try decorative painting and I have got mason jars and I have got acrylic paints that my boys were using and lost interest with. And this just filled my mind with possibilities. I need to figure out, I'm pretty sure you have to put something on the mason jar before you can paint it. That bunny on the basket, there was a fad where they were doing ceramics that were supposed to look like fabric when they were painted well. And some of them were really convincing back in the day. I was so busy looking at this angel, seeing if she might be a Christmas gift for my mother that I totally missed the pretty green vase and picture beside it. I'm not, I'm very selective with thrifted Christmas gifts and I will only get them for someone who I know would be happy with a gift from the thrift store, and that angel was close, but not quite. Like the little lighthouse box. They just, and here's another little lighthouse that had a background of seashells and was just intriguing. I was just kind of playing hooky for my own afternoon and spending a half hour or so divided between three stores looking at what there was to see. Got the milk glass vase that I swear everyone who had milk glass had this vase, and this shop's got two of them. I did that video where my son counted cornucopias. I might have to count vases. I like 
the picnic basket and someone, I think it was Joe from Joe's Country Junction, has those stacked in her sewing room to store quilting projects in. So I'm going to start keeping my eyes open for those. Is it bad that from three feet away I could tell those were Knit Picks labels? I think that might be a sign that there's a problem. That was nice yarn and it was $4.99 for I didn't count how many skeins were in there. There was a fair amount of yardage in there. If it had been another color and not that shade of green, which is not a bad shade at all, it would have come home with me. But I didn't absolutely have to have that shade of green to complete my life, which is probably a good thing. I went to three stores. I spent a grand total of 15 cents and got myself two craft books. I resisted a little bit of temptation and mostly was entertained by that creepy clock and that dress form. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. Thank you for thrifting with me. And let me know, did you see anything on this trip that you would have not left the store without or that you were just a little bit intrigued by or that sparked some memories? Let me know in the comment section below. And I'll be back with you again soon with more videos.